welcome finally back to Jubilee Road. Now it has been quite some time since we've actually been at Jubilee Road here on the channel. Now the biggest reason for that is the weather. Now if you are living in the UK it has been really warm uh, especially here in Wales for two weeks now um, and it hasn't really actually it hasn't rained I think it rained once in the last two weeks and it really has been far too warm to get into the attic straight away you would have noticed the boards have gone but that's for another video because a lot of work has happened down the other end of the layout right so then in today's video then we're going to do something a little bit different someone over on the Facebook page basically asked what equipment do I use to make my videos? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to have a sort of a, a quick behind the scenes look at here at Jubilee Road. What microphones I use, controllers, cameras and all that kind of stuff. So, first things first then. What camera am I using? Now what I'm going to do is just quickly insert a picture so you can see what that is. And there we go guys, that was the picture. So you can see what camera it is. So it is a Panasonic and it's uh, the version of it is a HC V770. Uh, I've had it a couple of years now and it's been a fantastic camera uh, creating good quality um, uh, pictures and video actually. It's quite good at doing both. You can get the upgraded version of this camera, which films in 4K. Now, I've decided not to upgrade to that one, because as many of you know who have tried this, uploading a 4K video to YouTube takes quite a lot of doing. So, I stuck to the full 1080, uh, which this camera does. It does have a built-in microphone, but it's not the best in the world. And I'm currently using the onboard uh, microphone that the camera has. So let's have a look at the microphones. Now here's the two microphones I actually use. So we're going to look at this one first. This is, you can just see it if it wants to focus, B-O-Y-A. Does that say Boya or Boya? I'm not too sure. A uh, foreign make. Now this is a quite a small compact uh, microphone. It's got the lovely uh, fluffy cat or dead cat, I suppose. That's what we nickname them. Uh, this microphone is only good for indoor use. For some reason, it is terrible outside in the windy conditions. I don't quite get that because this is quite thick, so it's a bit weird. But overall, it does produce very clear sound. This part, at uh, the actual microphone itself, is made of metal which is really nice and it just screws in to the top of the camera if you have the right attachment that is yeah really good quality microphone and all the videos here at Jubi Road are made using this microphone so let's put that one to side the other microphone then is this and as you can see it's a lot larger than the other one now this is uh, made by Rode Mic. You've probably all heard of those really good uh, quality makers of uh, microphone. Now it looks very similar to the one just there where we looked at, just larger. Now this one is fantastic for outside use. Uh, not here so much at the layout, as you can see, because of uh, the size. It just doesn't really work here at the layout. But overall, it's a good microphone. Now these can be on the pricey side. But to be honest guys, it is worth it. And you can see the cable there. And both of these microphones run off the camera battery. So as soon as you start filming, these work. So there's no switches for you to forget uh, to put on. So next up, we're going to have a look at the tripod that I use. And here we go. This is the actual tripod I use. I've only owned this a couple of weeks I think and I do like using it now the make is just here I'm not even gonna try and say that guys I'll probably completely mess it up it's just there now this has got plenty of options now we got a little thing here which 
uh, move the top bit up and down, which has a quick release which sits there. You can move this handle so it goes for all the way around and it does move side to side so you can level it as well. If we come further down, we have one, two, three height adjustments on all legs, which really helps if for different locations and uh, when you're out filming on so the preserved railway on a bank or something like that. Uh, lovely red colour, that's why I went for it. The only thing I'd say about this, I would say it's a bit on the light side. Um, so if you are filming in slightly windy condition, it does have a tendency to sort of vibrate. But there is a way around that. Just here. You can see it here. There's a hook just there. So um, what you can actually do, pretty much everyone who goes on a preserved railway out filming has a rucksack with them with all their supplies. Hang your rucksack on this, guys. It really does weigh down the um, the uh, the tripod quite well, and it does help stabilize it. This was only twenty pound. I'm sure you can hear that idiot with his loud exhaust in the background. I really can't stand those guys. Why can't they just make the cars a bit quieter? They don't even sound nice. They sound stupid, in my opinion. But anyway, going a bit off topic there. So yeah, twenty quid for this, and that is a very good price indeed. Right, that's the equipment that I actually use. And also, uh, all the photos that are taken at the layout are used by my phone, which is Huawei phone. Or Huawei. I don't know how you say it either, guys. Not doing very well with these pronunciations, am I? So, the controllers then. Well, here they are. So, first off, I use one of these. Very, very simple Bachmann DC controller. Uh, very simple to use. Directions. Turn it up slow, turn it back, fast. That's the wrong way around, isn't it? God, losing the plot. Anyway, really simple controller, inexpensive. I've had this for years and years and years, and it does work. That's all I can say about that. And then we go to sort of the main controller. This is the handset of it. And normally you plug that, just so you can see the socket there, to which goes into the back of the main unit itself. Now this is the Gauge Master and it says at the bottom, Podigy Advance Controller. Now this is a great controller, guys. I've had it quite a few years now. It's never gone wrong and it does exactly what I want it to do. You've got all the numbers there you, you can uh, get for your locos. You can double head, you've got the root creator. You've also got accessories, like if you've got signaling on your layout, you can type in accessory, press it, and it goes red, green, or amber, depending on what signals you've got. Uh, you can get into the programming, change numbers on locos, uh, get into the CVs as well. And this is the speed dial itself, just here. These are, obviously, yes, guys, are a bit more expensive, but trust me, they are so worth it. Really impressive uh, controller, does exactly what you want, and it's extremely easy to use. You don't really need instructions, you just get it, have a little play with it, and you'll be on your way. Right, that's all the equipment I use to run the layout. Yes, guys, this here is a visiting loco, which will be coming up very soon here on the channel. And don't look at this, that's a mess, <laughs> as it usually is. Right, now, a question that people do ask. Can you run both digital and DC locos on one layout. A few years ago, I was always told you can't do that. You know, oh no, you have to choose one or the other. Now, if you have been told that recently, ignore it because it isn't true. Here at the layout, I can have DC trains and DCC trains running at the same time, guys. Believe it or not, although on separate tracks. I'll just explain. Now, where that loco is there, that's the new Chinese loco sat right there. Now, that loco is DC, and it's on that loop there. Now, if I wanted to run a digital train on this line going the opposite way, I can do that. So yes, guys, don't let anyone tell you you can't. So if we just go down here, little switchboard, with, and it's currently on DCC mode, you can just see it there, all I have to do is, and now that loop is on DC. You can see there, they both are now, if I wanted them both, 
You can hear that engine buzzing, can you hear that? So that, and then we just switch it back, and it stops. So yes, you can have both running on a layout at the same time, if that's what you want to do. And I do that a lot here at the layout. So basically, that's the equipment I use at Juby Road. So we got the tripod, we got the microphones, the controllers, my phone for taking pictures, and obviously the camera which I'm talking to you on now. The other thing which I use is a laptop. So what I'm going to do now is quickly show you the editing suite that I actually use to make the videos. So let's go and have a look at that and I'll show you just a quick bit of editing so you get the idea of what the uh, system is actually like. Let's go and get to the uh, laptop. So here we are then. This is the laptop I'm actually using. It's actually a really good laptop uh, made by Lenovo. Yes guys, it might be a little bit echoey because we're in a different room now and also I'm still using the onboard mic which the camera has. So you probably can hear the difference in the audio quality. So on the screen in front of you then, you can see the system I use to make my videos. So this is Cyberlink. Now many of you would have heard that and this version is PowerDirector 16. Now, this is not free, guys. You have to pay for this. Uh, luckily, I got this on a sale, and I think I paid around about 40 to 50 pound for that. You might think that's a lot of money. Well, it kind of is, but this is a fantastic editing suite. You can do a lot to your videos. You can shorten a clip. Uh, if it goes a little bit wrong at the end, you can shorten it. You can add music, you can add text, um, you can add little pieces between each clip so it goes smoothly into the next clip, depending on what you're filming. You can add, uh, as I said, you can add text, you can write anything you want on any clip you've done, you can take away bits and all that kind of stuff. It's really simple to use in my opinion. You can also mess about with the audio levels, which I get shouted at for a lot, I'll speak to that in a minute. So yeah, so what we're going to do is just a really, really quick way of doing this. Now, you all know what my intro is. All we do then, you can just see part of the intro just here. Now this is a clip I filmed a few years ago. Now, all we do to start editing, you drag it into there. And you can see that just there. Let it load up. Now, as you can see, this is far too long for, uh, what you call it, the introduction to my videos. It's over three minutes long and that would get a bit boring. So all you do then, this is how we do it. We go here and drag, as you can see I'm dragging this across, to the point where I want to cut the clip. Now you keep dragging it across and you can see what the video is doing just in this corner here. So if we go a little bit more, no, gone a bit too far. It can be a little bit fiddly sometimes, guys, but it does do the job very well. So if we cut that, and you can see it's just shortened the clip to start there. But what I gotta do is go to this end and do exactly the same and drag it right the way across, keeping your eye on what this is doing up here so it gives you an idea where to stop. So if we just keep going like this, right, nearly there, a bit further, a bit further, and just nearly, no, no, the other way. <laughs> it can be a bit fiddly, guys, I did say, but I would say about there is right. And now, there we go. Now that, you move it to the front of the video like so. Now, if I play, you can play this at any time. You can see, just add, put the volume up there. And you can play that at any time to make sure you've done exactly what you wanted to. So now we've got to get the texts up here. Couple of ways of doing that. 
you can go into the menu here and manually type across there or you can go and download uh, pre sort of set uh, introductions which you can add your own words to which is what I have done so if we go to this bit which says T we upload that and go into custom I got a few different custom ones but the one I'm using is this one just here now what we do we click on that and drag it to there obviously we do need to extend the length of it to match what I've just done with the video so if we go back to the start keep your eye on this screen and we'll press play and this is what happens now and you can see all the words and titles have now come up on the video that all works really well the last part which is missing music so if we go to this top icon here, click on that, tad on the slow side today it seems, and we go down, and here is the music. Now again you click on it and drag it to where you want it, and then we just move it over like that. Now as you can see again, it's far too long. So as I've done with all the other clips, you move it, all the way back to there and now those three things are all the same length now next up because a lot of you well not a lot of you a few individuals do complain oh the music is far too loud uh, I you know to be honest I thought it was 2019 and you guys have your own volume buttons <laughs> I don't know guys but yeah it probably is too loud but you can turn it down on your device it normally says volume on it, up and down. Just try that. I'm only messing with you guys. I don't want to annoy anyone. I'm just messing. So what we do then, we put this back to the start and go into the audio mixing room. Excuse my hand there. And there we go. This is the audio mixing room just here. The two we are concentrating on is audio one and audio two. Now audio one is actually the volume of the steam loco that is going past in the video and audio 2 is the actual one that's controlling the sound of the music so what we got to do we got to press play and stop it really quickly and then mess about with the levels so let's do that just now right see we just stopped it second not even a second into the video now i've got to go over to this one and you've got these volume levels just here. This one needs to come down. So that is what, oh, that is, no, that's gone up. We definitely don't want it louder. I really will get shouted at for that. Now we got to turn both of them down. Just like, just like that. And now if we press play, we can get the audio level. Now just here, can you see these sort of slopes either side? Now, these I use, this one just here, as you press play, and when it gets to the end of the clip, you can fade out the music to make it uh, flow into the next clip as you want. So, let's do that now. Right, if I move the arrow, just here, look, keep watching. Just this one here. Should be able to hear that, and when it gets towards the end, you press it and it will fade out nicely. So, that is how you basically edit the video. Really simple. Um, that's how you do it and obviously there's more to it. Uh, I don't want to spend all day guys because if we click on this, now all these are the fade in and fade out things so the next clip then you would actually bring it up to the edge of this and go to that one or whichever one you want drag it down in between the two clips and it will make them merge in together a lot nicer than it would if you didn't do that um, I've only just got into doing that on my videos 
but yeah, it really works. And I really do enjoy using this. So just play it for you now and you can see how it works. So here we go, guys. This is the intro that all my videos currently have. So here we go. You can just see it in the top corner here. And now you hear the music fade out in a minute. And there we go, you heard the music fading out there. And once that music f fade out, you'd hear me saying, hello everyone and welcome to Jubilee Road. Or, for instance, hello and welcome to the Seven Valley. Or, hello and welcome to Eastley, which is a video coming. Uh, very soon and there we go guys that was the behind the scenes look at how I make YouTube videos it does take a bit of work sometimes not always so please let me know what you thought and I hope this helps you for instance if you're only starting a YouTube channel please ask some questions guys not just to me you know there's loads of people out there who are doing similar videos to me Go and ask the others as well if you are starting a channel. And it, guys, if you are thinking of it, stop thinking about it and do it. You know, it's a fantastic community here on YouTube. But, I know I'm going on a bit, guys, but I just want to tell you this. If you have a YouTube channel or thinking of starting, remember, it's your channel. Don't let any people in the comments saying, you shouldn't be doing this or you should be doing that. Just don't do that. Yes, if they give you constructive criticism, yeah, I agree with that. That is fine. But if someone outright said, oh, you shouldn't be doing that, that's just, just ignore that, guys. That is not right. And if you have a layout on YouTube, remember, I've said in this the past, it's your layout. Run what you want, when you want. It doesn't matter if you have a HST running with an early pre-grouping Steam logo. Does it look right? No, but guys, it's your layout and you run what you want. You do the scenery how you want. Um, you know, that keeps it more fun. Do what you want with your layout, guys. That's the best advice I can give you. So, I think that's enough for me of waffling on like a complete idiot again. <laughs> I'm sure you get fed up with that. Thank you very much for watching. The next video uh, here on the channel will be looking at a visiting loco, which has come from my friend Jack. So that'd be nice to see that as well. And obviously we got a day at Eastleigh coming and a layout update, which a lot of work has happened. A lot. <laughs> so thank you very much for watching. Uh, please let me know in the comments what you thought. And I'll be back at Jubilee Road or on location very soon. Bye everyone.